Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture that we will be looking at is based on classification of natural dyes. Classification of natural dyes based on their structure. There are several types of classification for natural dyes, but one of them is based on their structure. So, there is indigoid dye which encompasses indigo anthraquinoid dyes which has madder, lac, rheum, carotenoid dye which is an example for anato, anthocyanin which is hibiscus, alpha naphthoquinone which is henna, flavones which is reseda lutella, polyphenols or tannins which is catechu. So, this is based on the structure, type of structure of the natural dye. Indigoid dyes, this classification is based on the chemical nature, which will now be taking classification only in terms of their structure. This indigo dye is most common group of natural dyes. That dye stuff is extracted from indigo ferra tinctoria a bush pea family member. And we have talked about indigo in the last two lectures also. The dye was used prehistorically in India, where it probably originated. The word is derived from indican. You see it has a benzene ring NH and they are now connected with C double bond C so that it makes blue colored dye because it has all the requisites of oxochrome and chromophore. So, you have the C double bond O with benzene which is acting as a chromophore and the NH which is acting as oxochrome. So, it is an ideal example of chromophore and oxochrome. This is most common group of natural dye, the dye that is extracted from the leaves of indigo ferra tinctoria, strobilanthus and many other plants. Anthraquinoid dyes. Now, let us look at anthraquinone dyes. We just look that the various structures of anthraquinone examples of madder or mangist and we saw that how alizarine and other dyes are all having this basic anthraquinone skeleton. Now, this is called anthraquinone or quinone basic skeleton. Different types of oxochromes when attached to different positions on either of these rings can produce more and more color and the intensity of the color goes up as much as delocalization of electrons happen and that is related to various functional groups or oxochromes that are connected to these aromatic rings. It is very plain and simple chemistry. The structures have to have chromophoric group and oxochrome and this we learnt in the previous lecture. Some of the most important red dyes are based on anthraquinone structure. They are obtained both from plants and insects. These dyes are characterized by good fastness to light. They form complexes with metal salts and the resultant metal complex dyes have good wash fastness as well. Now, when these aromatic ring have the OH, the OH at the ortho position calculate the metal very easily. We will learn all this at uh, in a 
in due course of time and we will see the structure and it is most important for you to simply understand what the basic structure is. So, this is the basic structure of anthraquinone where benzene ring and 2 carbonyl and benzene ring that is the basic structure. Now, the oxochrome can be on either side of the benzene ring as what I told a little while ago and this particular mangisthin has carboxylic acid and hydroxy groups as oxochrome whereas, purpurin has the same basic skeleton of benzene ring, quinone and benzene ring, but the OH hydroxyl groups are on the other ring and not the same ring as mangisthin and that makes them look different and give different color to the main colorant. Next is after alpha naphthaquinone. Similarly, we have another category of structurally different dyes which is called naphthaquinone. Alpha naphthaquinone the best example is henna dye which has lozome present in the henna. And we learned this in the last lecture that lozome is the main colorant compound which has a very simple structure as shown on the next slide. It has just one benzene ring and this double carbonyl and the alpha beta unsaturated system you can say double bond carbon and double bond having an oxochrome of OH attached to it. So, you see it is from henna which is lausonia inermis that is the botanical name of mehndi plant. And the mehndi plant consists of this lozone dye which is orange in color and it stains the palm protein skin very readily, but it is also used in hair dyeing and fabric dyeing. So, the structure of uh, lozone is like this the most prominent member of this class henna is lozone and it is obtained from lozone in inner miss and you see here you have one benzene ring missing as from the anthraquinone dyes, but you have an oxochrome OH which does the deepening of the color. Then we have flavonoid dyes the next category of structurally different compound is flavones. Flavone is a colorless organic compound to begin with most of the natural yellow colors are hydroxy or methoxy deri derivatives of flavones and isoflavones. It is obtained from as dust on the flowers and seeds of various primula species in buds of various varieties of poplar in yellow dahlias in weld that is reseda lutealia and Dyer's broom that is Genista tinctoria. So, these are some of the yellow colored dyes sources of yellow colored dyes both available in India and abroad. So, there are the various sources of yellow dyes, but the basic flavon ring is the colorless compound. So, what does it make you understand? What I am trying to draw your attention to is the simple fact that oxochromes are surely required to make a conjugated molecule into a colored molecule or a dye molecule. And this we have learnt in the previous lecture therefore, it will be now more clear for you to see the structure. Now, looking at the structure of some of the flavones and flavanols here is an example of quercetin and morin. Quercetin has a typical structure of two aromatic rings linked up with another six membered ring and there are several hydroxy groups which act as oxochrome. Similar structure you can see, but the hydroxy groups are in slightly different position. So, that makes morin different from quercetin, 
but they both fall in the category of flavones. So, the structurally similar basic skeleton remains the same, only the position of the oxochrome changes and the molecule is called differently. Sources of uh, flavonoids are citrus flu fruits, onions, tea, etcetera and structurally flavonoids are a class of polyphenolic compound that means, which has more number of hydroxy group. They have a basic structure consisting of two aromatic rings A and B connected by a three carbon bridged C ring. Flavonoids can further be classified into flavones, flavanols, flavanones and so on. So, you see that among all these plants, the flavonoids have a greater variety of variation where the functional group or the oxochrome can make them flavones, flavanols or flavanones. So, they are different as because of the structure. Coming to the next lecture or the next uh, category, we have dihydropyrans closely related to flavones in chemical structure and are substituted dihydropyrans which can include in onion or allium sepa is the botanical name. Now, in onion we have quercetin. The basic skeleton of flavone is given here where it has two benzene ring and a three membered ring which is having oxygen and carbonyl. Now, in the quercetin molecule you will see that there are five hydroxy groups positioned at different places and therefore, quercetin will come into the category of flavanols and not flavin from the flavonoid groups of polyphenols. It is also found in many fruits, vegetables, leaves, seeds, grains and red onion particularly because there are variety of onion, but I am talking about allium sepa which is having a purplish cover, purplish pink cover and that has quercetin. So, that color comes from the compound called quercetin. Quercetin from onion is uh, uh, given on the left hand side which I have just shown. Catechin which is also quite similar, but the double bond is missing and that is from tea dust. So, catechin is not only present in catechu, but it is also present in tea dust and morin which comes from the jackfruit bark is also structurally similar in their basic skeleton except for the fact that the groups oxochrome groups OH are differently placed between quercetin, catechin and morin. There are very small differences in catechin, the double bond is missing and the position of the hydroxy compound in the third ring is different. Whereas, in the case of quercetin and morin, the difference is in only the hydroxy group of the third ring, their position. So, small differences and that makes the colorant molecule different. Then comes anthocyanins. The source is different types of berries, fruits, vegetables and flowers are the sources of anthocyanin and there are many such examples. In the flower category itself, there is a huge number of flowers which have anthocyanin. Among fruits, beetroot is one of the very uh, famous example. The structure of anthocyanin belong to the flavonoid group and have a basic structure of C6, C3 and C6. So, anthocyanin also have similar structure, they contain a chromophore formed by conjugated double bonds 
and then further on they have the hydroxy groups which act as the at different position which act as oxochromes. Next comes the category of curcumin dye. This curcumin dye is having an extended conjugation along with it has a methoxy group, hydroxy group and it can form a keto enol tautomer. The one shown on the left side is the enolic form of curcumin dye and the deprotonated form, the keto form is on the right hand side. And these two functional groups which are hanging like pendant can attract the metal and can chelate with the metal very easily. And therefore, it, the, it is structurally very apt for the dye to be a good candidate for cotton, silk and wool for textile dyeing. Then comes keratinoid. Now, you will see in this it has an extended conjugated system. What is an extended conjugated system? Double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond and with these appendages of CH3 hanging on all sides this you can see, but those CH3 do not act as uh, oxochrome. It is the conjugated, the extended conjugated system which brings in the, the color and beta carotene which is extracted from carrots is one of the examples of the colorant molecule. Now, dye per, from supan wood lumen, it has a compound called brazilene and this compound is quite different from the other structures that you have seen and this can then get another double bond and brazilene is formed. Brazilene is on the left hand side and brazilene is on the right hand side. Now, I will tell you a story about supan wood. The story goes like this that when we were trying to extract the colorant from supan wood by the usual conventional method of heating the wood luming, lumen shavings in hot water, it gave a brilliant magenta color. We were very excited that such a bright color could be obtained from wood lumen because mostly wood bark or wood lumen would give shades of brown. And so, this was one example which we thought was a very exciting example and we thought that this would bring in a different color range in the series of colors that we were producing from different dyes. And to our disappointment, this color started changing and Brazilian changed into Brazilian which became brown in color and this reaction was irreversible. So, once the double bond comes into the third ring it kind of conjugates and becomes darker brown in color, whereas if there is no double bond in the third ring, it remains magenta pink. We were terribly disappointed because we could not retain that magenta pink color and obviously could not dye. The dye that was produced was brown and brown we could get from men n number of sources, other sources. For that we did not need supan wood. So, then we started thinking of finding a way to retain this and there was a sonicator in the laboratory which works not on heating parameters, but on ultrasound waves and rightly so it was of course, a guess, a wild guess, a serendipity, but it worked very well because 
the dye got extracted fully from the wood lumen shavings and it retained its color. And so, what we did, we dipped the mordanted fabric into the sonicator and trapped that color and it never changed to brazilian and it remained as a nice magenta colored fabric which had good fastness properties so we were able to trap the brazilian and not let it get you know reduced to brazilian which was happening in atmosphere and heat so this is a small story that you know how some experiments uh, accidentally work very well and then they become a, a story that one can share with natural dye lovers. Then comes the dye molecules from Eclipta. If you remember, this is the one dye which was black in color and Eclipta is known to have structures which are called Vedelolactone and D-methyl Vedelolactone. Now, if you see that O-methoxy group is missing in the right hand compound, but the two together were present in the extract of Eclipta stems and the aerial part of Eclipta alba plant. It is a small plant which is not only used for dyeing of fabric but also used for making hair dye. Tannins are a large class of compounds and tannins are available in many, many sources of natural plants. Tannins are defined as water soluble phenolic compounds and are obtained from various parts of the plants such as fruits, pods plant galls, leaves, bark, wood and roots. So, they are present practically everywhere. Tannins play very important role in dyeing with natural dyes by improving the affinity of the fibers towards different dyes. So, they also act as mordant. By mixing with different natural dyes, it gives different shades like yellow, brown, gray and black and the sources of tannin are acacia catechu which is kach, katha, terminalia chebula which is harda, punica granitum which is pomegranate, curcus infectoria which is gallnut and plant sources. These are some of the plant sources of tannins. They are present in many other plants, this is just to name a few of them. Now, when you look at the complex structure of tannins, you actually cannot find out where is the middle portion of the molecule. So, it is such a complex uh, molecule and so integrated that all that you can see is plenty of hydroxy group a few of carbonyl group, a few of carboxylate groups and benzene rings and it is a mesh work. You can also see some dark lines, some shaded lines. Now, dark lines and shaded lines depict the stereomers or the uh, you know chirality of that particular carbon, how it is attached whether it is alpha or beta. So, not to get bogged down by the complexity of the tannin structure, but it is a complicated structure which is uh, you know uh, having so many hydroxy groups, so many carboxylate groups, so many benzene rings and of course, it is a big molecule. Then comes beta lanes, beta lane bestow color on flowers of many genera of plants such as Mirabilis, Glutifylum, Bougainvillea, Potulaca. These names may be familiar to you because these are typical garden plants 
and you must have seen these plants sometime or the other. Red beetroot that is beta vulgaris containing two major beta lane pigments, the red beta nin and the yellow vulgaxanthin one has been considered for long as the unique source of beta lanes. So, beta lanes have two classes of compounds, one is beta nin and the other is vulgaxanthin and they together put together are known as beta lanes. Beta lanes are a class of red and yellow pigments found in plants particularly in some fruits and vegetables. They belong to the nitrogen containing compounds known as beta lanes which is the common name. So, you will see that beta lane is now the first category where we are finding nitrogen in the molecule. So far all the other molecules had only carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. In indigoid there was nitrogen, but be it anthroquinone, be it dihydropyran, be it anthocyanin and so on. Sources of beta lanes. Beta lanes are water soluble pigments responsible for the vibrant color observed in plants such as beets, Swiss chards and certain types of cacti. There are two main types of beta lanes, the beta cyanin which are responsible for the red to violet color and the beta xanthins which are responsible for yellow to orange colors. These pigments are distinct from the more common plant pigments like chlorophyll and carotenoids. Beta lanes have gained attention not only for their role in plant coloration, but also for their potential health benefit. They are known to possess antioxidant properties and may have anti-inflammatory effects. Let me stop for a while and also let you know that some of these natural dyes have more than one role to play which means they can be used for medicinal purpose, they can be used for other purposes other than dyeing which is the main fo focus of this series of lecture. So, this particular beta lane is having antioxidant properties and anti-inflammatory that means it stops from inflammation as well. This is the structure of beta cyanin and beta xanthin. So, you will see that there are two nitrogens in the molecule, there are methoxy groups, there are carbonyl groups and carboxylic acid groups and so on. And they are structurally quite different and therefore, beta cyanin is different from beta xanthin and the more the conjugation, the deeper will be the color and that is true that beta cyanin because of the aromatic ring next to the nitrogen causes more of conjugation and therefore, it is red violet in color. Whereas, the simple alkyl group R 3 and R 4 on the nitrogen does not offer too much of conjugation and therefore, it is yellow to orange in color, beta xanthins are yellow to orange in color whereas, beta cyanin are red and violet in color. Diverse array of compounds with varied chemical structure. Natural dye encompasses a diverse array of compounds with varied chemical structure. And you will agree with me because just now I showed so many example and each dye had a different structure altogether. These structures contribute to the color they impart and their interaction with different substrate. Common structural features found in natural dyes is that 
they have conjugated system. So, you have to remember that in most of these dyes, the chromophoric part comes from the conjugated system. Many natural dyes contain conjugated system of alternating single and multiple bonds. This conjugation leads to the absorption of specific wavelengths of light resulting in the observed color. For example, in compounds like indigo and alizarine, conjugated system contribute to their blue and red color respectively. So, one thing that you have to remember that the chromophore here in the natural dyes has to be a conjugated system. Functional groups that intensify the color come from the category that natural dyes often contain functional groups such as hydroxyl, carbonyl and amino group which are oxochromes and these functional groups can act with substrates through hydrogen bonding, dipole dipole interaction or other chemical reactions influencing dye substrate interaction and color fastness. So, unless and until there is a conjugated system in the molecule and there is oxochrome to enhance the conjugation, it will not, the molecule will not come into the category of dyes because this is the basic requirement of a dye. Now, polymeric tannins, chromophores are the part of molecule responsible for its color. In nat natural dyes, chromophores often involve conjugated pi electron system such as double bond, aromatic rings or heteroatoms like nitrogen and oxygen. These chromophores absorb specific wavelength of light giving rise to the color of the dye. Oxochromes are functional groups that modify the intensity and wavelength of absorption of a chromophore, thereby influencing the overall color of the molecule. Common oxochromes in natural dyes include hydroxyl group, amino group, carboxyl group and so on. And this we have seen repeatedly, why? Because I want you to remember the difference between chromophore and oxochrome and what is the main colorant that is the chromophore as the name suggests. Chroma is color, chromophore is color producing and oxochrome is an auxiliary which on addition creates more conjugation in the molecule and therefore, the color intensifies. These groups can alter the electronic structure of the chromophore leading to shifts in the absorption spectrum and changes in color. Polymerization is another phenomena. How did the tannin big molecule form? Some dyes such as tannins which are found in the polymeric material are in the form of a polymer. These compounds can form complexes with substrates through multiple hydrogen bonds and other interactions. Polymerization can enhance the dye's affinity for substrate and improve color fastness. So, when I was showing you the complex structure of tannin and I told you that it is a big molecule, it must have formed from similar molecules by conjugation, by reaction and therefore, it has become such a big molecule and most of the units of that big molecule were alike. So, it was out of polymerization of these small units that that big tannin complex structure was formed and that had many, many hydroxyl group, had carboxylic group, 
had benzene rings and therefore, it was helping in the color fastness because it had many chelating sites for the compounds to attach. Structural features play crucial role. Metal complexes, certain natural dyes form complexes with metal ions resulting in metal complex dyes. These metal ions can coordinate with functional groups in the dye molecule altering its electronic structure and color properties. For example, cochineal dye forms a complex with aluminum ion leading to a bright red color. If we do not put that aluminum, it will not complex and will not show so much intensity in color. Similarly, when we put aluminum in madder extract, we find it gives a bright red color. Whereas, if we put another salt that is an a cerium salt, it will give purple color. So, the color intensity and the color nature can get altered by the complexation nature of the metal that is being added to the dye bath. This has to be understood because the aluminum and the other metals have different kind of electronic structures and their chelating powers are also different. Therefore, if you have to understand the nature of the complexes, you must be able to understand that these are formed by proper chelation or with the hydroxy groups or the OH and the OH or hydroxy group if they are appropriately positioned, then the chelation with the metal takes very well. Otherwise, the metal cannot chelate with just one oxygen because the electronic configuration needs to get fulfilled. These structural features play crucial role in determining the color, stability and dyeing properties of natural dyes. So, as we are going along, we are trying to understand the principles of natural dyeing and in order to understand the principles of natural dyeing, we first have to understand and have an appreciation for structural features. What are the chromophores? What are the oxochromes? How they are placed? Where the chelation of the metal mordant will take place? and how it will adhere to the fabric etcetera. Understanding these features can aid in the development of sustainable dyeing processes and the preservation of traditional dyeing techniques. So, it is very very crucial to understand this entire structure of the molecule of the colorant properly so that we can plan the dyeing process. Structure determines the color imparting factor. What kind of color will be obtained from which kind of dye molecule is all dependent on its structure. So far in this lecture, we have been only emphasizing on the different types of structures and the structure of natural dyes play a crucial role in determining their ability to impart color. Here is how the structural features of natural dyes contribute to their color components. Metal complexes, some natural dyes form metal complexes with metal ions resulting in metal complex dyes. These metal ions can coordinate with the functional groups in the dye molecule or oxochromes, altering its electronic structure and color properties. The formation of metal complexes can shift the absorption spectra of the dye and enhance its color intensity. 
For instance, the coordination of metal ions with anthocyanin pigment can stabilize their color and improve their dyeing properties. If we do not put metal in anthocyanin, the dye is very fugitive. What does the word fugitive mean? That it will wash away in the first or the second washing and therefore, it is not stable, does not have a good dyeing property unless and until we put a metal ion which coordinates. Overall, the structural features, metal complexes, certain natural dyes from complexes with metal ions resulting in metal complex dyes. These metal ions can coordinate with functional groups in the dye molecule, altering its electronic structure and colored property. For example, cochineal dye forms a complex with aluminum ion leading to a bright red color. These structural features play crucial roles in determining the color, stability and dyeing properties of the natural dye. What it means that unless and until we put that metal ion in the dye, it will not form a metal complex and unless and until it forms a metal complex, it will not give a bright color. So, that metal complexation becomes very, very crucial when we are talking about natural dyes because that would depend or determine the color, its stability on the fabric and its dyeing property that means the fastness properties of the dyed fabric. Understanding these features can aid in the development of sustainable dyeing processes and the preservation of traditional dyeing techniques. Structure determines the color imparting factor because unless and until we are clear and have a clear understanding of the structural details of natural dye, we will not be able to understand the color chemistry of the natural dyes. The structure of natural dyes therefore, plays a critical role in determining their ability to impart color. Here is how the structure features of natural dye contribute to their color components and metal compensation we just saw is a very important factor. I gave you an example that in an anthocyanin pigment, if we do not add aluminum, it the color will not intensify, it will not coordinate with metal and therefore, will not have good washing fastness. As a result, it will have poor dyeing properties. Therefore, metal complexes, some natural dyes form complexes with metal and they are absolutely necessary to form this metal complex dyes and they can shift the coordination, the, they can shift the absorption spectrum of the dye by this metal coordination and enhance its color intensity. For example, the coordination of metal ions with anthocyanin pigment of hibiscus can only stabilize their color and improve their dyeing property when a metal salt is inserted. Overall, the structural features of natural dyes including conjugated systems, chromophores, oxochromes and metal complexes determine their ability to absorb and reflect light leading to the perception of the color. Unless and until all these four components are present in a molecule it cannot be a candidate for dye molecule. Understanding these structural characteristics 
is essential for controlling and manipulating the color properties of natural dyes in various applications such as textiles, cosmetics and food coloring. Now, I will give you an example how we are able to get different shades from the same dye. The same madder extract is made and in one beaker we put aluminum and madder, in the other beaker we put cerium and madder. Aluminum comes from the alkaline earth metal series or rather the third group series uh, of the periodic table and cerium comes from the inner transition metal series. They have absolutely different chemistry in terms of their coordination complexation properties and they form different colored compounds. Therefore, when we add cerium it gives a different color and when we add aluminum it gives bright red color and this is uh, the best part that we can get from the same plant extract, colorant extract different colors can be generated on the fabric by manipulating and playing around with different metal salts which then complex differently or coordinate differently. Multiple components coexist. Now, this was one aspect which I did not touch upon so far in this lecture. A natural dye is rarely a one component system. It has multiple color components that coexist within the same molecule or mixture. So, when we make a natural dye extract, it is not always a single compound. If I am making a madder extract, it is actually having mangisthin, rubidin and it has purpurin. Similarly, when we are looking at onion extract, onion skin extract, it has quercetin and many other compounds. So, these dyes often exhibit complex color profiles that arise from the presence of different chromophores or structural variations within the dye molecule. Here are a few ways multiple coloring components can be present in a single natural dye, mixed chromophores. That means, it is not a single compound, but it is a mixed chromophore. Some natural dyes contain multiple chromophores within the same molecule, each capable of absorbing different wavelengths of light. The combination of these chromophore leads to a mixture of colors observed in the dye. So, sometimes one particular molecule is chelating and the other time the other molecule in the coloring agent is chelating and that creates a you know a mixture of colors are observed. For example, certain anthocyanin pigments found in fruits and flowers contain multiple chromophore derived from flavonoid molecules resulting in red, purple, blue hues depending on the specific structural arrangement. And even then there are always these the, the components are not in equal amount, but the one which is in major amount takes the lead in the shade. So, what I am trying to draw your attention to is the fact that natural dyes first thing are not single component dyes, second thing that the one which is in if they have more than one chromophore then the one which has uh, or more than one molecule colored molecule then the one which is in extra quantity takes the lead in deciding the color and then the different arrangements and the metal complex complexation takes place. 
Now, when we look at the various components of lac dye, you see they are structurally so alike. If you look at lacaic acid A, lacaic acid B, lacaic acid C and lacaic acid D, the main structural component of lacaic acid A, B, C is almost the same. The chain lengths on the nitrogen containing substituent on the first ring is almost the same, but not the same and therefore, they are differently named, but all four of them put together make the lac dye. So, what does it mean that in lac dye all the lactic acid A, B, C, D are present. They may be different in their percentage composition and so the one which is higher in percentage composition takes a lead in deciding the color of the lac dye and it is dark purple, reddish purple colored dye and it has four chromophores different in structure and they all have the capability of chelating with metal ion and therefore, lac dye is sold as lac cakes because it can form lakes with many metal and especially with aluminum this is very popularly sold as lac cake. Now, tautomeric forms we have seen in the case of curcumin. So, some natural dyes can exist in different tautomeric form. If you remember the enol keto tautomers, where the arrangement of atoms within the molecule changes without altering its overall composition. These tautomers form may exhibit distinct color properties due to differences in the electronic structure. For instance, curcumin, the main pigment of turmeric can exist in keto as well as in all tautomeric forms, each contributing to overall yellow color observed in the dye. Polymeric structures, certain natural dyes are polymeric in nature consisting of repeating unit as we saw in the case of that complex tannin that may contain different chromophores or structural variation. The presence of multiple chromophores within the polymer chain can lead to broad range of color observed in the dye. For example, tannins found in plant materials form polymeric structure with diverse chromophores resulting in various shades of brown observed in tannin based dyes. So, from overall what do we understand? We understand that structures of dyes are very important. In the previous lecture we saw that how chromophores and oxochrome actually decide the color. The color chemistry is decided by oxochromes and chromophores, primarily by chromophore and then by oxochrome and by metal complexation. In this lecture, we have seen the different structures of the natural dyes we have seen that how nitrogen and conjugated nitrogenous uh, natural dyes have a totally different chemistry from anthraquinone and anthocyanin dyes. And therefore, we have also understood that tannins which are complex structures are also very very uh, you know intricate polymeric material made out of the monomer unit and during their biosynthetic pathway, the 
monomers must have polymerized and therefore, they become a resultant tannin which is a polyphenol multi hydroxy compound which can you know have several chelating oxochromic regions where the metal ions can go and chelate. So, overall in this lecture we try to look into one very important factor that so far we were thinking that natural dyes or extracts from plants are only single compounds, they are that is not so. There could be multiple uh, components and we saw the example of, uh, of madder extract and of lac dye extract. Lac dye is made up of four components, madder is made up of three to four components, but the major compounds have been identified and they are the ones which are responsible for the color. So, we have come to an end of this lecture almost, multiple metal complex species, the presence of multiple metal complex species within the dye mixture can contribute to the overall color profile. So, in summary I would say natural dyes can contain multiple coloring components due to the presence of mixed chromophores tautomeric forms, polymeric structures or metal complexes within the dye molecule or mixture. These complex color profiles contribute to the dye served in natural dye materials and are important considerations in various industries including textile. Multiple site chelation possibilities because wherever there is a hydroxy and carbonyl, it is able to chelate very nicely. Multiple complexation options with curcumin can be seen here and we have come to an end of this lecture. Thank you.